Hello, this is Jeff Sullivan with the Dell Tech Center. This is a demo of the PowerVault NX3000 setup and an overview of the interface. First up, you'll see the integrated Dell Remote Assistance Console, which I use to launch a console into the NX3000. I use this to record the demo as when I first start the system, there is no network and I needed a way to record a demo via screen scrape. The NX3000 comes pre-configured with software, volumes, and even a shared folder. Everything you need to get your NAS up and running quickly. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is the remote access console I was just referring to. I'm going to go ahead and log in and launch a console. The first thing you see when you power on your system is this default uh, password notice. And when you go ahead and click on OK, it'll go ahead and log into the system for you. And then immediately bring up the PowerVault NAS initial, configure, initial configuration wizard. There's not really a lot to this. Uh, it's going to prompt us to change the password, set the language, and then do a reboot. Uh, when you do say next on changing the password, it'll remind you once again what the default password is, which is there on the screen. And then it, when you say change, it will launch the user access or the uh, Windows Server 2000 user accounts dialog in the background. You can click on it, say change your password, which I did here my password and a little hint to remind me what it was. And then I'm going to click change password. After that I'll close the window and I'll flip back over to our configuration wizard. I'll say English and next. And it'll ask to confirm those changes. Once that's complete uh, it'll ask us if we want to reboot. And I'll say reboot. Now after the system restarts, we'll be brought into the Windows Storage Server 2008 Server Manager GUI. Should come up here in just a second. And the first thing you want to do is, is get the system up on your network correctly. And for the sake of the demo I just went ahead and uh, I didn't bother with anything other than setting up a uh, couple of interfaces to plug into my lab network. So you can see here it shows your current network setup which at the moment I have none so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, view network connections and then set each each one of the adapters is, that I have plugged in You'll notice we have eight ports, and I'll, I'll set each one of the ports the way I uh, need it to be for my particular lab network. For the sake of the demo, I went ahead and cut out the portion of the uh, other three adapters that I set, or other three ports that I set up. So we'll go ahead and close, uh, and then I'll close this window. You can see on the screen our settings. If you were to scroll down on this particular scene, you could see the security information as well as you know, a help section. So we're going to spend most of our time in roles. We're going to open up file services, share and storage manager, uh, and then FSRM, which is where we'll spend most of our time, which is the File Server Resource Manager. If we open that up, you can see our quota management and our file screening management. Uh, 
under file screens, we can, you know, set template or we can use some of the existing templates. We could set our own file screens. Uh, some of the templates that are already there are such as block audio and video files or email files. Uh, we could create our own. We could also create our own file groups. Uh, same thing for quotas. Uh, you can see we have the option to create a quota template or we can create our own quota or use the existing templates. Here's the uh, disk management which we'll use a little bit more later but it is you know accessible right there under FSRM. Okay. Here you have the shares that already exist which you could modify the existing or go ahead and delete them. We could provision a share using the wizard, the provision share wizard, uh, and select your location. You notice there's one already there, which you have, you know, the ability to edit and modify. I'm going to create one card, you know, a storage folder for, you know, let's just say public, and uh, say OK. And then we'll get to, uh, you know, choose what disk it resides on. Click next. You know, yes, change the NTFS position, you know, permissions if we want. In this case, we're going to leave it the same. We can do either SMB and, or both NFS. In this case, I am going to say uh, one of each. Uh, I can change the uh, permissions here. You know, look at the caching, user limits. Say OK. Actually, permissions is the next screen. In default, all users have read access. I'm going to go ahead and you know allow them to write to this particular share as well. Say apply. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the NFS permissions. I'm just going to say edit, and again, it's only read. I'm going to change it to read write. So whether they come, whether your client connects via SMB or NFS. Uh, I could apply the quotas here, you know, the, the templates we were looking at earlier. In this case, I'm not going to. And same thing for the file screen, which is the next screen. And again, here's our templates, you know, block audio and video files written out to the share. And if I wanted to expand this uh, later, uh, I had the ability to add this into an existing namespace or add another system into the same namespace. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and say create, and that's, you know, we're done. We now have a, a file share that, that uh, other systems can get to. In fact, I'll just, the uh, system I'm using for the remote demo, I'll go ahead and, and connect to share. Put in my host name or my IP address. You can see that there's my storage public. There's also that NAS share, which was the uh, default folder that came with the system. Map network drive to it. And there it is. Okay. So there's a couple other things that you know you may want to do. You want to uh, run reports to look at you know the utilization. There's a number of different reports. You can either have it scheduled or you can generate reports now. You can duplicate files, you know, uh, files by group, large files. Uh, and we can just select which one we're going to do the report on. You can either do it by volume or by the particular folders there. Just click OK. You have a couple of options for how it's displayed. You can generate background or run it now. In this case, I went ahead and ran it now. So here's my, you know, reports. I've got a file by owner. Okay, there's nothing out there, so there's not much to report. But neat little uh, reporting facility built into the tool. Duplicate files, large files, and so on. You can generate a report by, you know, illegal file types maybe. So we're going to change the properties of this particular volume, and what, what we're going to do is we're going to enable shared instance 
or single instance storage to reduce those duplicate files, reduce the footprint. So instead you have a pointer. If there's multiple copies of a file, you'll have one original and the pointer's back. Uh, and that's just done at the volume level like that. And then we also have the ability to uh, set, up, set up shadow copies of volumes. And again, it's simple. Just select properties of the volume and then enable it. Uh, we can it's just a message to say what the defaults are. We'll just say yes, that's fine. But we have the ability to go ahead and edit that. You know, this is how much you're going to use, this is how much space, and these are the times that you're going to make these, these shadow copies. And that's our demo. Thanks for your time, and don't forget to visit www.deltechcenter.com.